Hello everyone. In this video we create a UI table by sending commands to it. Here is a preview of the finished dashboard. We create a simple table where the user can select between two commands. Those are add row and clear table. By clicking add row a form appears, where the data of the new row can be entered. With the red button you can dismiss the entire group. With a click on a row, this group appears, showing you some more functions to perform on the table. You can now choose between updating the row or deleting it. Let's start by defining our dashboard layout. We create a tab called Dashboard, which contains four different groups. We need the table, command, data and row groups. Let's start by defining the table. We assign the table to the according group and predefine three different columns. They have left alignment and the plain text format. The first column is ID. In this example, we use a customer ID. We give our customers a name and an age. We also need to enable the send data on click function. This is required to delete or edit a selected row. Our dashboard shows an empty table now. Let's adjust the width to make it easier to read the columns. For this example, we need a bunch of UI controls. We create a new flow called UI control. We add a link in node. The name of the node is a control in. This allows us to connect to the UI control from anywhere in our notepad. The output directly connects to a UI control node which will execute all the incoming commands. To hide all the unused groups when a new user connects, we need another UI control. At the output of the node, we add a change node. Here we set the command for our UI control node. For more information about the UI control, check out my video on this topic. With the group key, we can either show or hide a group. Here we want to hide. We define all the groups that we want to hide. The name of the group is the name of the tab underscore name of the group. In our case it's dashboard underscore data and dashboard underscore row. Connected to the UI control. That's all for that flow. Before implementing any commands we add a debug at the output of our table. This makes development way easier. We also want to add a change node, where we set the incoming data to the flow.selectedRow variable. This means that the data from the last clicked row is stored in this variable. We need that for editing and deletion of the rows. After clicking on a row, we want to show the row group, where the user can select his actions. We use the UI control for that. In the change node, we set the msg.payload to a JSON object. Here we say that we want to show the dashboard underscore row group. Where we use a link out node to connect to our UI control flow. If we deploy that we see that nothing has changed, since we have no data yet. The first command we implement is clear table. It allows us to clear the entire table. For that we need a new button that we assign to the command group. We use the trash icon and set the background to red, to make it clear that this is a delete option. The label of the button is clear table. Now we define the actual command using a function node. This function is called clear data. We need to send the UI table command in the msg.payload. The name of the command is clear data. Besides the command, we also need an argument. We can set the argument to an empty array. In addition to that, we also set our customer ID to zero, 
We do that because we deleted all the customers by performing this action. We connect the output of the function to our table. In the dashboard we now see our red button with the trash can icon. Let's define the add row functionality. Same as before, we start with a button. This time we call it add row and give it the plus icon. We connect two change nodes to the output. The first one of them is to set the command. We need it afterwards to distinguish between the multiple commands. We set the flow variable command to add row. In the other change node, we send data to our UI control. This time we want to show the dashboard underscore data group. Here we use the link out again. I forgot to set the add row button to the correct group. In our dashboard layout, we make sure that the add row button is above the clear table button. This is our result. If we want to add a row, we also need to give it some data. We accomplish this with a form node. Let's create the UI form with the name form and we locate it in the data group. The data we want the user to enter is a name and an age. We make both of those required. For more information about the UI form, check out my video on this topic. Here we also need a couple of change nodes. The first sets the current value of the flow command variable to msg.command. By doing this, we can use a switch to perform different actions based on the command. The other node is again used for the UI control. We want to hide dashboard underscore data and dashboard underscore row. Since we have multiple commands that we can execute, we need a switch node. The switch checks the msg.command property of the incoming message. If the value is add row, we exit on output 1. If it is update or add data, we exit an output too. Now we can define the add row function. The name of our function is add row. We set the msg.payload to the input variable. We need a variable here because we want to change the ID to the next free ID. We load the current value of the ID and increase it by 1. If we don't set our ID to 0 in the clear table function, then the ID will increase until we restart our node thread. So we set the increased ID to the ID of the input object. We also need to save the current ID in the flow variable. Next, we define our table command. The argument is our data. If this value is set to true, the new row is inserted at the top of the table. Otherwise, it is added on the bottom. We use true for this example. Now we connect the function to our table. Let's test it. By clicking on add row, our form appears. We fill in some data to test it. As we see, the customer ID gets increased by 1. The clear table function seems to work as well. When we add a new row, we can also see that the ID has been reset to 0. Next, we define the update row function. In our switch, we defined update or add data. The update or add data command updates an already existing row or adds it if it does not exist already. In our case, we only need the update function. After selecting the row, we can check our flow.selectedRow. 
Here we have all the data of the selected row. In our function, we read the data from the selected row flow variable. We read the msg.payload. Now we replace the data from our current row with the data from the form. Since we can't select the ID in our form, we don't have to add it here. Lastly, we define our command. The argument is our updated row data. The name of the function is update row. We can test the function after implementing the button. Before we do that, let's implement delete row. For delete row, we only need the selected data. We define a new button in the row group. The name is delete row. Let's set the icon to trash to show the user he's about to delete something. In addition, we make the background red. We define a function and a change node. We start by loading our selected row. We define the command. The argument is just the ID of our row. Now let's connect it to our table. Lastly, we update our view. Here we want to hide the dashboard underscore data and the dashboard underscore row. Now we can test. We can add a row. By clicking on it, the row group appears where we can delete the row. We test if it also works for multiple rows. One problem is that we can't exit from the form. For that, we add a dismiss button in the data group. Same as before, we use the trash icon and the red background. We use the same UI control command as the form. In the dashboard layout, we set the dismiss button beneath the form. By clicking dismiss, the form gets hidden. But the data in the form stays here. If you want that function, you can leave it as is. We want the data to be deleted. To accomplish that, we use a change node. In there, we set a JSON object containing the name and H key. The value is an empty string. Connect the change node to the form input. This works now as we wanted. The last feature is update row. We use a button in the row group. Since we want to edit some data, we use the pencil icon. Here we need three different change nodes. To write the current data from the table to the form, we use a change node. Here we set the msg.payload to the selected row flow variable. We make sure to set flow.command to update or add data. Since we access a flow variable, we do not need any connection here. 
In the last UI control for this video, we want to show and hide a group at the same time. We show the data group and hide the row group. Let's try it out. Click on add row to add a row. Set a name and an age. By clicking Submit, we insert the data. After clicking on a row, the row group appears, where you can choose between Update or Delete row. We fix the layout of our buttons quickly. Now create two data rows. Click on one and select the Update row function. The row group should get hidden and the form appears. We set our capital E to a lowercase e. After submission, the value gets updated. Everything else is the same. Now we click on row and delete it. Lastly, we clear the entire table. I hope you enjoyed the video and you could learn something from it.